The SOLIDWORKS toolset is extremely vast and covers a variety of different industries. We have many customers using it for point of sale design. In this tutorial video, I'm going to walk you through the creation of this cardboard display stand, making use of the sheet metal tool set such that we can generate the 2D flat pattern and the manufacturing information required. We begin by opening a sketch on the right plane. We draw an L shape and add two dimensions of 325 millimeters to fully define the sketch. Once complete, we exit the sketch and select the base flange tool. The overall size of our display stand will be 500 millimeters. We're going to extrude to half that length at 250 millimeters because later we will mirror the entire body that we create. I'll define the thickness at 3.5 millimeters. Because the material is cardboard, I'll define a small internal radius of 0.1 millimeters. I'll keep the bend allowance as default, K factor at 0.5, and auto relief set to tear. The next step is to create an edge flange. Currently the profile of the flange is outside. I'll set it to be thickness inside. I then need to modify the sketch profile. I'll relate the vertical edge collinear to the thickness edge of the sheet. I'll then draw a line at an angle and trim away the excess. Finally, I'll fully define the sketch with a dimension. We'll now create another edge flange, this time from the bottom edge. We need to set the flange position to bend outside. This will give us a 0.1 clearance between this flange and the previous flange. The clearance is related to our default bend radius of 0.1 millimeters. We'll modify the flange profile and I'll convert the angled edge of the previous flange and trim away the excess to leave me with a closed profile. We'll then complete the feature. We want our next flange to wrap around our first edge flange. I'm going to achieve this with two edge flange features. I'll select the edge flange tool and my angled edge. The flange position is set to bend outside, so it doesn't self-intersect. The flange length is set as up to vertex. This means the flange will always extrude up to that point on the flange, regardless of whether you decide to change the flange's position or the thickness of the sheet. For the next edge flange, I again leave the flange position as bend outside and modify the flange profile. I remove the horizontal and vertical relations that have been automatically applied and relate the side edges of the flange sketch parallel with the sides of the model and the bottom collinear as shown. Looks good. We'll add a couple more edge flanges. We'll set the flange position to material inside. I'll modify the profile of each flange and add a width dimension of 35 millimeters and offset from the top vertex by 20 millimeters. That's the side done. We'll now create an edge flange on the front of the display stand. I'll set the flange length to up to vertex and put the top vertex on the side flange where the bend radius starts. Material needs to be set to bend outside to give us clearance. I'll edit the flange profile and extend the flange so it runs the full width of the display stand making the right hand vertical sketch line collinear with the far right hand edge. Next we essentially want to make a hem. Potentially I could use a single hem feature for this. However, I'm going to produce the same result with two edge flange features instead. The reason for this is I can build in some design intent with the end conditions options available in the edge flange tool. We'll begin by creating an edge flange. Flange position is set to bend outside. We'll edit the flange profile and pull the flange in such that it does not clash with the display stand side. I'll add a clearance of 0.2 millimeters 
and relate it collinear to the tab edge. We'll do a similar procedure to the back of the display stand. Next up, we'll take new flanges off the two short flanges that we've just created and extrude them up to the vertex of the two tabs. We want this display stand to hold itself together. I'll add some tabs and slots using the new tab and slot feature. We select the edge the tabs are going to run along and the face they are going to extrude up to. I want the offset from the start and end of the edge of the tabs to remain at 20 millimeters. I want three tabs equal spaced along the edge and the width of the tabs to remain at 30 millimeters. We're now at the stage where we would like to mirror the body. We launch the mirror tool. Select the face to mirror about and choose the body to mirror. I'll now add some more tabs and slots along the front and rear edges. We'll start with the back edge. I use select other to define the rear face to extrude up to. I'll leave the instances set to three and increase the width to 50 millimeters. Groups can be created within the tab and slot tool similar to Worldman's. I'll select the front edge and the underside face all other settings automatically inherit the values from the previous definition. That's the main body of the display stand complete. And as you can see, we can flatten this part. We're now going to move on to the insert. I'm going to design the insert within the same part file as a multi-body sheet metal part. This will allow me to relate the sizes of the insert to the main body. Meaning when we update the size of the main body, the insert will change too. I'll open a sketch on the right plane and sketch the profile for the insert. I'm going to change my display style to hidden lines visible. I'll relate my first line to the front hidden edge. I'll then come across horizontally and up vertically, relating coincident to the angled edge. Then across, down, across, and up vertically, ensuring my last sketch line finishes before the back edge. I relate the top vertex horizontally with the model vertex. I relate the larger horizontal lines equal. Now time to add some dimensions. The thickness of the sheet is going to be applied to the right hand side of the line. Therefore, I need to add a clearance dimension between the right hand vertical edge of my sketch and the internal vertical edge. A global variable called thickness is generated automatically with sheet metal parts. I can equate my dimension to equal the thickness. The value will update as the thickness of the sheet changes. For the hem section, I'll add a dimension equal to the thickness multiplied by two with an additional 0.5 millimeters added on to allow for the bend radius. Finally, I'll add two dimensions of 20 millimeters to fully define the sketch. Now the sketch is complete, I'll use the base flange tool and extrude up to surface in both directions, choosing the relevant faces. This ensures that if the width of my main stand increases, the insert width will update automatically. I'll now use the tab and slot tool to add some more tabs between the insert and the main body. We'll select the vertical edges of the insert I'll set the offset to 10 millimeters and the amount of instances to two, reducing the tab width to 40 millimeters. We'll finish the model by creating the fascia panel. 
We'll create a rectangle relating to the width of the insert with a 40mm offset above and apply a base flange feature. We'll sketch a circle and create a tab feature. We need to ensure this only merges with our facial panel body by selecting just that body in the feature scope. Next, we will add our tabs and slots, selecting the bottom edge of the facial panel. I'll increase my offset back to 20 millimeters and my instances back to three. Finally, I'll knock the sharp corners off using the break corner tool. Based on the way we have created this design, we can change the overall dimensions and everything updates nicely. And that's the modeling of our display stand complete. Of course, from here we can generate our 2D engineering drawings and export the flat patterns to DXF or DWG. So, we've now created our display stand. Feel free to have a go for yourself. You can take a look at our other point of sale tutorial by following this link or check out our YouTube channel or website for many other SOLIDWORKS videos and content. If you are interested in SOLIDWORKS, please contact our sales team for a personal demonstration. Mm -hmm.